with that? Mm-hmm. With, with, the, with the graphics? Yeah. But um, I can't really complain with the way that you did it. Because what I wanted it was the Supreme Commander on the foreground oh, of it. No. I yeah. Did, I did do it on the foreground, actually. No, no, but I was meaning like the, the logo for Supreme Commander. Oh. The game. <laughs> on the front, so it actually had some colour for once. And have that as you underside at the back. But um, hey, that's just me being fancy. Unfortunately, and my computer can't do that. Yeah. Well, I had to put, do everything in black and white because apparently I don't quite have, have enough RAM to do colour properly. In Photoshop? In Photoshop. Well, you can just always convert to another program and then redo it back onto Photoshop. But, uh, yeah. I can understand where you're going on with that. Yeah. Um. I, oh, yeah. Speaking of Mars bars. Yeah. I had this weird dream last night and I actually um, looked up on the warehouse. Yeah. Which... If we have enough time, we may actually go there on the on before we go to quiz night. Yeah. Um. We are. Um, well, I am in the in the makings of making mm. an oat loaf. You are making oats loaf for the warehouse. No, I know. No, I'm making the oat loaf with a a, a loaf tin yeah. that I'm going to buy from the warehouse. Yeah. And and it's going to be a multi layered one. Okay. So it's going to be oat. Yes. Sultanas. Oat. Mars bar. Oat. <laughs> an oat loaf lasagna. Yes, an oat loaf lasagna. Pretty cool. In fact, why don't we make it? That's That sounds very plausible. Yeah. Mm. But what do you think about that? I would eat it. Yeah. And, um, I had something a little bit fancy, mm. which is... A, like, you think about the flavours... And go, huh? If you look behind you, and you grab that iso pure, three point three pound thing of protein, beside the mochi, beside the macchiato. Mm. Right, 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 right. Yes, and um, what? Yeah, the, I got this for twenty nine ninety nine, as it was a whey deal, which is part of um, NZ Muscle. And if you look at the flavour on the top, what does it say? Pineapple, orange, banana. W- would you consider that as a weird protein powder flavour? No. No? The, man- the banana's a bit weird because it's basically tasteless, but if you have pineapple and orange, you basically get yourself a tropical, sh- tropical shake. Yeah, that- that's true. And it does taste very f- tropical fizzy. I'm trying some. I'm going in. No, not this way. <laughs> what she did is that she licked her finger. Then realised how how unhygienic that was. Do you want me to make you a shake? Okay. Or she's going in for the kill. Tastes like uh, tropical fizzy. Yeah. Don't spill it. Don't spill it because this is Mike's food. Yes. Never ever spoil the food of a university student. Yeah. Especially very much a broke one. And what I did the calculations for that because it is um, whey isolate, which is ninety percent protein. Yeah. If you calculate the figures and then project it back into a meat source. Yes. It is eight dollars sixty four a kilo. That's pretty damn cheap. Yeah, which is under my ten dollars per kilo threshold. Nice. Yeah. So the, 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 that's why a lot of people would like to. S- have protein powders as a backup. Right. So is that what you've been doing all week? Getting protein powders and oh, no, like that? Oh no, because I've got that one. And then I have the five pound um, BSN since six in chocolate. But, you know, because of the price and the conversion, I couldn't beat that. So okay. in, in, instead of buying like a roast chicken or something like that, I would buy one of those. Interesting. Yeah. So... Uh, how was your week anyway? Apart- but but, but firstly, but firstly yeah. welcome back to the As Yet Undecided podcast with your conflicted hosts, Mike and Sophie. I thought it was my turn. Oh, uh, well, I'm sorry. You said how was your week without actually going into the introduction. Never but, mind. But, but it's okay. You can do the next two weeks. Okay, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, week was okay. Um, I was a little bit sick over the weekend, which was kind of a shame because I Aww. wanted to... Um, Go to the museum and pay the respects before Anzac Bay, um, because other things. 
But um, other than that, I might rearrange the room where we do our filming. Um, and Sophie, what do you think about the rearrangement? Much better. Yeah, so what I've done is that I've made as maximum floor space as possible. Which you can see neither here or there. Um, and how was your week, Sophie? You seem very colourful today. Yay, thank you. Uh, yeah, I had a relaxing holiday over at Taupo with my um, dad's parents. Oh, so, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You've, I've, I've taken photos of the house. You've seen them. Yes, but I, I, I didn't put three and three together. What do you mean? That one you went to Taupo. Yeah. I thought I thought you were in the Waitakere's. Oh goodness! I said I said it in the um, <laughs> European way, didn't I? I, I was supposed to say Topo, not Topo. But it's okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so so how was Topo? It was very relaxing, especially since we didn't have any internet most of the time. Yeah. And when we did have internet, it was about one megabit per second. <gasps> so I did a bit of a digital detox. Aww. And the air was nice. We did a lot of walking. Majorly hilly. Um, it wasn't quite Topol, but rather Acacia Heights, which means we were on top of a cliff most of the time. And that means a lot of walking up and down if we wanted to get anywhere meaningful. Um, now, was that on the north or the south part of town? I believe it's north. Okay. Yeah. So Acacia Heights is the fancy as um, rich retirees area so, of Tobol. So is that beside Hooker Falls? Near it, yeah. yeah. Near okay. it, yeah. Yeah, just just to get my geographical reference in check. So you'll have Tobol Town, then you yes. have the road to Hooker Falls. Yes. Then you have the road to Acacia Bay. Okay, yep, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yep, yeah, just you know, put put in my mind in it because I know those roads pretty well. Yeah. Um. In an infamous story, um, firstly, happy birthday to my mother, her, her birthday was on Monday, um, and one story that we went to my grandparents' place that they live in the Bay of Plenty, mm. and we drove past Topol at about 10.30 on New Year's Eve, Yes. and you know, what are the street lights there? The trout, right? Yeah. And my mother said, oh, look at the pretty dolphins. And in reference to the trout lights. <laughs> and, and guess what mum called them? What? Prawns. No. What? Prawns? Prawns. I'm not too sure what's worse. Dolphins or prawns? Prawns is definitely worse. <laughs> Dolphins you can kind of get away with. Yeah. But pr- prawns? She was thinking of the hooker prawn farm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and actually, and so how, was the, how was the family outing as a whole? It was pretty cool. We did a lot. We, um, no, not a lot, actually. We went quad biking that's, and walking. Yeah. Yeah. H- hung out with Pete, my somewhat grandparent. Yeah. And Helene, his partner. Yeah. And then what did you do for Anzac Day? Drove back home. You drove back home? Yeah. Okay. Um, but before Anzac Day, a few uh, days before, I bought an Anzac pin. Because I hate those tiny little crep poppy poppies they don't they just don't last that's and, right and also they produce a whole lot of waste as well you know the plastic waste at the end yes um and there was a big thing a couple of years ago where the rsa used to actually buy them in from china yeah and people pick up a stink saying that you're not giving jobs to new zealanders even though you're part of the rsa yeah and um it, it, it ended up changing their mind a little bit but i still think that they're doing the majority of their poppies are made in China. Well, I got some ones made in New Zealand. I knew that because a whole lot of students handed up saying that, oh, we're getting them to, them to you for free because we made them. Yeah. So, so obviously some people do make them yeah. at, home, at home. As, you know, volunteering service. Yes. It'll be interesting when I go back to um, volunteering tomorrow at Elizabeth Knox to see how many people actually commemorated Anzac Day or how they do yeah, it. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Um, and um, I didn't go to Anzac Day Dawn service because... You've been to many. Yeah, I, I've been to quite a few and if you've if you've been to it once, you've been to them all okay. pretty much. Right. Um, it's just the veterans get less and less every year. That gets really awkward. So how in how many years do you think we'll have we'll have the veterans parade and there'll be nobody from World War One? Well, 
it'll be pretty close to now. I mean, we still have a few. Yeah, yeah, Very still, long lifers. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, no, no. There'll be none left. They were all. They'll be all from World War Two. Everyone's from World War Two now. Yeah. No, there's no no more veterans from World War One. I. I, I wouldn't think so. I don't know. Because that that would made me think that they were born pretty close to the turn of the century. Yeah. And the pers- the la- the last person, the oldest person who was the last person who was born in the 19th century just passed away a week and a half ago. True. So based on the mathematics, there'll be very few and far between if there is any left from World War One. I. I think like maybe one or two because uh, maybe they were released during 1918, which means they were born in 1900s. And yeah. that is not counting the underage veterans. Yeah, but, well, exactly. But if you think about it on a purely mathematical standpoint... There'll probably only be one or two left. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, I bought the pins. Okay. Yeah. Even though they're only, even though they're five dollars, but honestly, they're so much better for the environment because I can reuse them next year. Yeah, and it, it brings up a good point. Um, there was a article done by Chris uh, Chris Ratu. Yeah. New uh, Zealand Herald. New Zealand Herald talking about uh, his opinion piece about how um, Anzac Day is becoming less relevant. Yeah. Um, and and I kind of see his point. Um, it, we should commemorate it, but it seems that f- for the people that go, they go they go into three camps. Mm. One is the overseas perspective that, that they've never been to an Anzac Day service before. Yeah. Um, two people are there purely for either a financial or some sort of direct benefit. Saying, like, if you had to work there or you work in the broadcast industry. Yeah. Or you really have deep ties into um, veteran affairs. That's number three. That's number three. All right. Or, linking back to number three, one of your grandparents slash one of your grandparents is in the parade. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that's what I was meaning by entrenched inside veteran affairs. I see. Um... And for me, um, like for instance, my great grandfather was a French to English interpreter during World War One, mm-hmm. um, and we never really gloated about it. Um, no, when I heard it, I thought it was pretty damn cool. Yeah. Um, so um, we're still trying to track track it down the medals. Apparently, they're at the Odihanga RSA, mm-hmm. from what I've been told, um, and that's when. My, his daughter died during um, Auckland anniversary. Well, and, one of his daughters. Yeah, one of his daughters. Your great aunt. Yeah, and my um, yeah, and like you know, we tr- we tried to be there. We tried to figure out where the medals are. Um, I'm gonna give the RSA a bit of a um, email. Yes. And trying to figure out where they are. Uh, yeah. Good luck trying to find them. Medals yeah. are small, easily lost. Yeah, but it was like, cause it was like, it, it, I think he um, donated the medals in, when he died in the 1980s. I see. Yeah. Do you think it's interesting how medals actually have a value on the market? Yeah, um, th- there was that huge Wauru incident mm-hmm. back 10 years ago where there was um, a lot of medals gone. Um, even um, the I remember upper, that. upper medals were gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's a shame that they've actually there is a price yeah for them r- r- rather than them being you know having no monetary value but they are earned they should be only earned of course yeah but there is actually a huge black market on um, eBay basically selling medals for people who want to commit fraud saying that they've won those medals and they've been to a certain battle such and such but really they haven't yeah and it's a shame I know right yeah, and you could even think about that in a lesser perspective about um, paying for driver's licenses, um, being fraud that saying that you haven't got a um, PhD or a master's or a bachelor mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And that, and that sort of... He values it. Yeah. Yeah, it does devalue it. It should be earned, not paid for. Yeah. Money shouldn't be able to buy everything. Yeah. Know? Oh fraud yeah it's it pure, is it's pure fraud yeah uh, yeah 
Because when you gain those PhDs and uh, driver's licenses, it's based on your ability. And we don't want dangerous people on the roads or or super scientists to run around. Or some um, c- certain hosts that drive onto the sidewalk. Yes, that's why I don't <laughs> have my driver's license yet. <laughs> I have, a, I do have my learners, but it's only learners. Yeah, but but that's fine. Um, that's there's there's a reason why I haven't got them restricted. <laughs> oh yeah, and, and speaking of that, um. Oh, oh yeah. Actually, in saying that, you got no, you got none wrong on your learners, correct? I did not get any wrong for my quiz that will apply for the learners. Okay, yeah, because that was the same with me. Yeah. And there was this big, massive hoopla. Yeah. About like, like Dad just gave me the road cone because Mike, you're doing the license in two weeks. Here's the book. And the, and this was, you know, we didn't even have a computer back then. Mhm. Um, and then, oh, the last few questions were a bit. Dipsy, but I got none wrong. Um, but it was a stupid reason why I failed my restricted the first time. What was? Um, I I drove. I didn't give way at a uncontrolled intersection. Right. Yes. Oops. Yes, which the rules have actually changed back, so I would have been right. Oh wow. Yeah, which is it was sort of a. A silly rule, yeah. But uh, it was just like everyone else doesn't abide by those rules. No, true. So it was just like, no, great. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to Anzac Day and things like that. Why do we like commemorate? What does Anzac Day mean to you? And, and, and this goes back to what happened at the Wellington dawn service mm-hmm. about that protester. Um. It's about the commemoration of war sucks. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I, I, I consider Anzac Day to be a day of tragedy, to actually honour the fallen and to make a promise that there should be never any more. Yes. And... War sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, like, when the, when the protester yeah. um, talked about those Afghani children that were killed by the... Uh, New Zealand SAS yeah. and the um, New Zealand First Chief of, Chief of Staff and his son completely obliterated him in front of the press. Um, I, I can understand where both sides are coming from because... They're both the victims of war. Yeah. and Veterans veterans and Afghani children alike are both, are both victims of war. Yeah. And history is always written on the side of winners. Yes. And it is a shame. And, yeah, I, I understand both sides of the argument. Yeah, and, yeah, you're right. Oh, actually, I'm right. War does suck. But it's what we learn from the lessons of history that make us progress as... Society. Yeah. That's obviously some people don't learn because some people absolutely love war and they think it's actually an absolute great thing. Yeah, be, be, because um, of all the seven sins part of it. Mm. It's not just that. How come there seems to be this underlying propaganda that killing people's cool and war is cool? And say, like America, so especially prevalent in America. Oh, it's, it, it, it's the result of dominance. Mm. They want to maintain their superpoweredness as long as possible. So they're aggressive? Yes. Okay, even though it produces a whole lot of innocent, even though a lot of innocent lives are dead, and even though it produces more harm than good, but it increases their GDP. Yeah. Yeah. Crap. Yeah, I don't understand why. No, they, no, it decreases GDP overall, though. Oh yeah, on a worldwide perspective. On a worldwide perspective. But on yeah. the United States perspective. The selfish in, perspective. Yeah. Yeah. That's rather sad, isn't it? Don't you think? It is. Right. But, but, but there's going to be a point where there will be no more superpowers, and I can't wait for that time. Oh, I'd love for that time to happen, because honestly, it's just silly. Yeah. It be, it, because purely what's going to happen is that it's it's going to be power purely based on population. Mm. Us versus them is just not... I don't get the whole us versus them model, because everyone's human. Yeah. We can all win. I, I, I believe in win-win situations. You know, it'd be really nice. Yeah. A worldwide tax rate. Mm. 
I know you. Yeah. I know you can't maintain it. There is no way. But it'll be nice. <laughs> only if you have a world government. That's the only way you can actually enforce it. Yeah. It's like then the, the people would say, "Oh, isn't that why we have the United Nations?" Yeah, but no. No, United Nations are basically a core of diplomacy. They don't really have any real power. There's just a whole lot of influence and pressure. Yeah. They don't really have any real power. There's just it's just a think of it more towards a club room rather than the parliament. But you know what would mm? be the start of having a world government? What? Aliens coming to Earth. Mars attacks. Yeah, yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but, but not that. Oh, not just that. Or Vulcans. So, do yeah, you think... Yeah, any sort of intelligible alien race. So, um... So, the, the, so um, would you rather... Oh, no, silly question. Okay, the aliens, if they ever do come to Earth, do you think they'll lean, they'll lean more towards the Vulcans or the Martians from Mars Attacks? It'd be more towards the Vulcans. I sincerely hope it's the Vulcans as well, because honestly, that, that Vulcans coming to Earth managed to kickstart the whole Star Trek universe, and let me tell you, that universe is awesome. <laughs> yes, the whole fact that, that <laughs> there is no currency, I love that part of it. Yeah, no, kind of is, there kind of is a, bit, a little bit of currency, but it's yeah, not yeah, as I, important. I it. It's not quite as important as currency of today. Yeah. Yeah, but honestly, I'd love for there to be a Star Trek world. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what would you do... On the Starship Enterprise, I think. If there, if there was a role for you on the Starship, uh, on the Star Trek universe, what would you be? What do you think I'll be? I would think you'd be the analyst, like, like data. Data, data, data. Like data. What, what does he do again? I I spent so long since I watched the films, and I've never watched the TV shows. He he he's pretty much the information. Yeah. And make sure everything's okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, that'll be me. Yeah. Or maybe the lawyer. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, because James, because if I remember correctly, James T. Kirk was into trouble a lot. Oh, yeah, okay. So you want to be Spock. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense, right? Da- yeah, that makes Data, sense. Data was, was the Spock of the next generation. Yeah. Yeah. I can understand that. Yeah. What do you think about me then? Uh, I think you're more towards um, Nurse Chapel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either Nurse Chapel or uh, Whoopi Goldberg. So, like the person uh, yeah. behind the bar. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the clairvoyant. Yeah, yeah, the clairvoyant. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like talking about everyone's issues and trying to resolve them. Yeah, that's me in a nutshell. How about the psychologist, the the psychic? Psychologist? Yeah, yeah. I I could be that. Yeah. I could be that easily. It's like, yes, I understand what you mean, but if you think about this perspective and all that sort of stuff, I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you. Yeah. <laughs> Which, of course, leads to the strange question of why Why do you think shooting games are so popular? Uh, it's... <sighs> because Star Trek was made into a shooting game of sorts. Well, it's... Well, there's either in two boats. Mm. Like, why do people play video games anyway in the first place? Um, is that point of escapism? Uh, I play video games to relax and a little bit of escapism. Yeah. But I can't make the escapism go too far because I really genuinely don't like killing people. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, w- w- what I've noticed with you, uh, uh, and, you know, take this as you will. Yeah. You are very involved yeah. in everything. Yes. Um, I never do things by half asses. Yeah. I do things with a whole ass. Yeah. So you actually think about the person's feelings... Before you kill them. Yes. Rather than me, I realised, you know, this is a game. These are just pixels. Let's kill them. Yeah, exactly. So you have to re- remove your own ego away from the actual battle. Because if you if you are that too involved inside a video game, yeah. you may tend to think that way in real life. What do you mean? Like, if you thought about how uh, how life mm-hmm. now is becoming more and more a game to you... Yeah? Yeah. That sort of perspective. That might cause problems. Yes. Because my inhibition of killing might be lowered. Yeah, oh, yeah of, of something. I, I wouldn't go killing. Yeah? Because killing is too far. Right. But we're talking about other micro... 
parts of it. Right, so I might delay doing my work because I'd rather do something else. No, but you, you, well, you may do your work differently. Right. Is that necessarily a bad thing, though? No, no it's not necessarily a bad thing. Mm-hmm. But you just have to understand that. True. Yes. But yeah, like, like, when people people assume that people got to kill these kill these people because of video games. That's a little bit too far-fetched. No, what I think is that they got the cause, correlation of causation wrong. I think it's be, I think the reason why um, killers play violent video games is because they genuinely like playing those violent video games. There's, and at the same time, they still genuinely like killing people. Yeah. Uh, they wouldn't... I mean, put it this way. They'll still kill people even if they didn't have video games. Yeah. Yeah. They just say killers like violent video games. Yeah. Not... Violent video games make people into killers. Yeah. Because I know plenty of people who play violent video games, and yet they're the most harmless people in the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, it's... And especially with what's been going on currently with the um, AAA video game model, Yeah. it's becoming more and more unsustainable. So if you're like a Activision or an EA, yeah. um, when you're pumping out your Battlefields or your Call of Duties... Yes. Um, you have to put that much investment into that model that even though you may sell over 15 million copies... You won't make a lot of money if yeah. you say mobile. Which is why AAA games are leaning, um, becoming more like mobile games. Haven't we talked about this? Yeah, we have. But I'm just bringing up... A... We will link you to the other podcast in which we <laughs> talk about this in length. Yeah. Anyway, why do you play video games? Um, it's, it's a little bit of nostalgia. Yeah. Um. Because I, I I was always playing video games ever since I was a kid. Yeah. Um. Going back to the Sega Master System Two, or as it um, the overseas people would call it, the Game Gear mm-hmm. from back in the day. Um. And that's why most of the games that I play are usually one released ages ago to acclaim, mm-hmm. and two just reminds me back when I was a kid. Three. Yeah. So you, so you play games like most people listen to music, older people listen to music. Yeah, and, and it's actually becoming more prevalent now, yeah. um, especially with the release of the NES Classic and for this year the SNES Classic. So how old are Generation X is now? Because um, Generation X was probably the first generation to actually play video games in any meaningful way. Yeah, yeah but the, you have to think about like what, how- what you mean by meaningful way. As in, they're the, probably the first generation to actually have consoles at home. Yeah, but there, but there was a difference between having an Atari versus yeah. having a Nintendo. Huge difference. True that. But, nevertheless, having the console at home led to a huge revolution in gaming. Yeah, and, and it's now become to a point where consoles are becoming more and more relevant mm. due to technology. Yeah. And VR, which are the new consoles. Yeah, but I, I don't think... V, v, uh, VR has its place. Mm-hmm. VR definitely has its place. Um, do I think it, it, it is capable now for what we see in the future? No. It's going to take a long, long time. That's why VR is often bundled with consoles. Yes. Like PlayStation 4. Yeah, exactly. And th- their model is fantastic. What they can do with that um, PlayStation 4 Pro with the VR, it's it's amazing what they can do. Still, still make me motion sick though. I'm waiting for when the frame rate hits 200 plus before I start, start with the VR. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, that, and that'll take time. That'll take time. Yeah. But I'm patient. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so you play games for nostalgia, yeah? Yeah. And. And I play games to relax. This yeah. definitely doesn't mean I like. To, this definitely doesn't mean killing people. Yeah. So, why do people play shooting games then? Uh, b- b- why are they so popular? B- b- because, one, it's competitive. Yeah. And two, and two it makes you relax. Because I remember, you know, when the I... The adrenaline the rush makes you relax. Well, yeah, because, like, you, you know, when you build up so much anger yeah. from, from the workplace after working an eight-hour shift, yeah. it's always nice to go back home and jam for a game for an hour. So, you pretend... That the mooks are your workers that you're angry at, and you're shooting them, and that makes you relax. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Maybe not that harsh, mm-hmm. but you know what I mean. 
it just, it just basically lets out some steam. Yeah, because like like when I was working night shift at the freezer works, yeah, I used to go home at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, play Halo three online for an hour and a half, and then go to sleep at five o'clock. Oh, does that actually relax you? Well, well, it did. Okay. Yeah. No. Well. And anything else? So shooting games are just generally popular because they help people relax. Yeah, and it's all about timing. Okay. Timing? Yeah, especially when you have to pull the trigger button. Satisfaction? Yes. Okay. And, and, and to, to all those people who go, Ugh, it makes me angry because of the ping rate. Just shush. <laughs> <laughs> Just shush. <laughs> I want a I want a green bar. I don't want a I don't want a red bar. Look at shush. <laughs> this, it's the challenge as well, I suppose. Yeah. Which is which is probably the same high as as, as I guess of um playing puzzles, puzzle games. Yeah. Which I absolutely adore. <laughs> yeah. Puzzle games, I like you, you know. I would think puzzle games would be good for a lunch break. Yeah. F- for keep the the stimulation alive. Yeah. But. Is also going on going on something else. Yeah. So if you don't think really tedious for like eight hours, yes, it'd be nice to take a break, have a go at a puzzle game, so you keep your mind fresh. Mm. But it's also another task, a different task. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway uh, <laughs> what do you consider your best features? I don't know, Sophie. Yeah. What are my best features? I don't know what are mine. Do I have any? I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't have to be features. Uh, oh, well, actually, it does kind of have to be features because um, funny thing is, we often talk about how, about our personalities, but we never really talk about how we look. Yeah. Um, um, what we look in the mirror every day, like, I guess it's a little bit healthy to think that you're relatively pretty. I suppose just don't get to the point that you think you're the most beautiful person in the room. Yes. That's yeah. probably going a bit far. Vain much? Vain. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. When you look in the mirror, what do you consider is the best feature on your face? <laughs> my eyes, technically. Yeah. Um, because of, of my eye colour. Because technically, it's it's clear. Yeah. But it's that, it's that light bluish colour yeah. that a, a lot of people like. I do, actually. Me too. Yeah. But my most redeeming feature is what's inside my face. What? My brain. <laughs> We're not talking about that, Mike. Yeah, I know. We talked about that enough, but yeah, I think I think for me it's my hair. Yeah. So how many spoolings do you have currently? None. <laughs> That's one of the great things about my hair. It actually goes up to my hips, but there's actually, but there's very little split ends. It's just soft. It's so soft and healthy. Mike's petting it right now. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, it's pretty smooth. Yeah, smooth, thick, lots of it. Yeah, and, and if you look at photos of me when I was a kid, yeah, I had so much hair. What happened? Um, genetics happened. Oh, that's so sad, isn't it? <laughs> it's okay. Um, it, it, it's always it's always nice to accept the inevitable. Yeah. <laughs> e- even though I cling to it. Like dear life, look, but I, I, I'm just going through it gracefully. Do you think you'll go to a hair loss specialist? No, 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 no. It's no. Do you think you might shave, go bald? Uh, I don't actually suit it that much. So like, like, like there'll, there'll be a point in time where it will be all gone. Yeah. But for now, we're fine. I'm fine. Oh. No, that's not. I think we should actually finish because you know. Yeah, of course. On uh, worldly wisdoms. Yes. Uh, I'll let you finish off. You can okay. We are the Asia Undecided podcast, and you can contact us on Asia Undecided at gmail dot com, or you can contact us individually. I am Sophie. Um, you can find me on Sophie nine seven oh nine on most platforms apart from Instagram. Sorry, Russian Sophie. And you can contact me on the Manus. That's T H E M A R N U S on all platforms. Um, have a good week, guys. Um. April's over. Yes, April's almost over. Oh well, there we go. And a stop. <laughs>